We did it! We're into double digits. The season has just passed the halfway mark, which means I haven't seen my family in like 10 weeks. I hope someone's feeding the kids. I dropped a bag of kibble on the kitchen floor before I left, but I mean, it's probably gone by now, right? Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Shut Up Football. I'm Jeff Stoltzfus. That's Kevin. Last week, Tom Brady went to Germany. Jeff Saturday coached his first Colts game, and the Packers found what they'd been missing all along. Love. We're talking about week 10 of the NFL season. We'll recap the games in a second, but first, it's barely news. The NFL went to Germany, and we were forced to confront a very serious question. Just how horny is Mike Piera? During the broadcast, he was caught doing whatever this is, Singing the old Lingus love note? I don't know. Whatever it was, I think we can all agree that we can't unsee it. So thanks for that lovely gift to my nightmares. Does he not own a TV? Is it just leather-bound books and kamikaze sex swings at the Piero studio? He should be able to see he's still on screen. I hope whatever was just off-camera had legs. It was an awkward moment, but what do you expect from a guy with a on his job title? What, I can't say a Oh, that's the line? Tom Brady was given some later hosen by a German journalist. That's awesome, said Brady, before handing them over to Giselle. I'm just kidding. Probably difficult to scrape that Bucks logo off. I mean, it looks like quality stitching. Robert Quinn has a chance to set a record, the first to play 18 games in a season. After the former Bear was traded to the Eagles, his bye week went kaput. That's not fair. We gotta fix this. Let's just check the old Eagles schedule here. Oh, perfect. They play the Colts next week. Enjoy your week off, Robert. Take the family to Vitri Cucina. Tell them Jeff sent you. They won't know who I am. Fans who were enjoying the Vikings-Bills game were furious when Fox ditched overtime in a thrilling game in favor of the local market games. Packers-Cowboys. And in some cases, Cardinals-Rams. I get it. I'd rather watch a hobo fashion show than watch Colt McCoy face off against John Wolford. But this wasn't Fox's fault. There's a league rule that mandates they switch to the local market games, even if those games are super lame. Which makes me wonder if this whole thing isn't just some big conspiracy to push NFL Plus Plus Premium Plus Plus, where you can watch whatever game you want without fear of being switched over. I'm currently an NFL Plus Plus Premier Plus 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 subscriber, and I gotta tell you, it has all the games you want and all the games you don't. But it doesn't contain the peripheral oddities that I enjoy, AKA all the stuff that becomes content for this show. If you access the Bucks Seahawks game, you'll find Mike Piera and his tongue have been magically erased, which is a big plus for the general breeding public, but a bit of a bummer for a buffoon like me. If I go to the circus, I want to see the clowns. I mean, I don't actually want to see clowns, just funny stuff. Before we move on, this channel has grown some new subscribers over the past month, and I'm glad to see it. Thanks for joining us. During the off-season, we do fantasy football content, and we're not too bad at it, so hope you join us for that too. During the regular NFL season, we try to have some fun with some of the lesser news surrounding football. Oh, and we do one other thing around here. It's called the recap. A promo told me how to watch this game, but I already had a pretty good idea. PJ Walker got the start. But Baker Mayfield did his best to get a concussion anyway. Or maybe he was just trying to know what it felt like to start a game with him as quarterback. One big headache. The Panthers ran Deontay Foreman into the ground. He went over the century mark again. After a touchdown, he Rapunzeled into the stands. They ran him 31 times. He probably just needed a seat. Two weeks ago, kicker Eddie Pinero missed a pair of game-winning kicks, and fans wanted his head in a basket. Behold, the Eddie Pinero redemption game. I mean, that that's good enough. Marcus Mariota spun on his ass and then pulled this pass out of it. Don't catch that, it's shitty. Cordero Patterson only got five carries in this game. You trying to keep him fresh for the playoffs? Deontay Foreman threw pieces of his uniform to the crowd. And I don't care if you did save my fantasy football season. Do your own laundry, Foreman. Welcome to Munich. The Bucks squared off against the Seahawks in Deutschland, which just makes sense. Tom Brady is the biggest Deutsch I've ever seen. 
I think I read that wrong. Rookie Rashad White had a breakout game. 22 carries and 105 yards. At one point, he shoved Quandre Diggs out of his own underwear. German fans were singing Country Roads and Sweet Caroline. Players must have loved it. Something about DK Metcalf just screams John Denver fan. The Bucks tried to get tricky, and Leonard Fournette threw a pass to Tom Brady, but he slipped. Like it mattered. One of these dudes is 45 and believes in the Crypto Fairy. The other is 22 years old, 6 foot 4 and runs a 4-2. Come on, Tom Brady shouldn't be running routes in any language. After the interception, Brady was flagged for being a trippy little shit. Brady's made a habit of kicking and tripping other players this year. Put the wall back up, and this time, build it around Brady. Protect us all from his vicious goat legs. Josh Allen was injured coming into this game, bringing into question who would start this game for the Bills. Josh Allen, Josh Allen, Josh Allen, Josh Allen. Look, if you don't know, just say it. This game was epic. Justin Jefferson had 193 yards. He made arguably one of the greatest catches of all time. On 4th and 18, he got a hand on it, but the defender had two, which somehow wasn't enough to keep it from Jefferson. It was the most astonishing catch since Wuhan, China. People went on to say stupid shit like he is him, whatever the fuck that means. This was the game of the year. People wanted more, so they went to overtime, where the Bills had a huge goal line stand. And they damn well should have, considering they had 12 men on the field. But the Bills fumbled at the one, and the Vikings fell on it. A wild end, but credit the Vikings for their biggest big boy win of the season. Justin Fields did it again. Lost. It was another explosive day for Fields. 147 yards, two touchdowns on the ground, two more in the air. At this point, he accounts for 95% of the Bears' offense. Don't check my math on that. Why did they even trade for Chase Claypool? What's he even doing? Maybe he walks around with a basket of rose petals, paving the floor for Fields and holding doors like a gentleman. He's gotta be doing something. The Bears hurt themselves with nine penalties. They've gotta have their eyes forward, Coach Eberflus said, and that's definitely where you want them, unless you're a fish or an emu. You're not an emu, are you, Khalil Herbert? Prove it. The Lions got another win. All that grit is finally paying off. They're like a high-quality sandpaper or a cat's tongue. After the game, Fields needed stitches for a cut on his ear. I was always told that snitches get stitches. Maybe legs aren't the only body part he's been running. Somebody check him for a wire. The Broncos kept Derrick Henry locked up tight in Tupperware all game, but it only opened up a passing game that was longing to breathe free. After weeks of lingering in the desert without Ryan Tannehill, the receiver's hands were cracked and dry, but Tannehill brought instant lubrication, moisturizing them all game, and I'm really regretting the analogy I've chosen right now. Russell Wilson's only touchdown in the game went to Jalen Burgel, who you can Google on your own time, but based on his jersey and general demeanor, seems to be part of this Broncos team. The catch of the day goes to Cortland Sutton, who threw a hand just in time to snag this ball. High five. Everything feels a little better when you win, said Tannehill. Go on, Ryan. Describe it for the Broncos. The Jaguars started the game with an onside kick, which just makes sense. Why wait until you're down three scores to employ a little desperation in your game plan? The Chiefs gave Isaiah Pacheco a full workload. He got 82 yards out of it and one whoopsie fumble. It appears they put Clyde Edwards Alaire on the shelf like a box of Christmas lights. He had zero touches. Trevor Lawrence threw two touchdowns to Christian Kirk. Kadarius Tony got a taste of the field, and it was turfy. Four receptions and a touchdown. He looked like a human cheat code. Actually, he looked like he just summoned a demon in your rec room, and he can't wait for you to find it. Tua Tungovailoa is a big fat fish in a tiny little fish bowl. He cannot be contained. He dropped another three touchdowns like the heart of the ocean. Jeff Wilson appears to be the answer to the Dolphins' rushing game. Tua showed off his acting chops on one play. When the Dolphins got sneaky, he was staring at his wrist, which is likely covered in a sag after application. I look forward to seeing him next week playing the wacky neighbor on a popular family sitcom. The Dolphins are looking good, and Coach McDaniels is setting a fun example for all nerds. Maybe Cliff Kingsbury needs to get a $3 haircut and start playing some Dungeons and Dragons. Daniel Jones only threw 17 passes, but he was efficient, like a quality letter opener. Barkley led the way with 153 yards and a touchdown. Davis Mills was absolutely swallowed by the Giants' D. That's a lot of man to digest. Kenny Galladay shouted at Daniel Jones on the sideline, which seemed unfair. You can't pick on the man just because he looks like a pack of saltines. He's actually making plays. 
Unlike Galladay, who was dropping balls like a preteen boy and probably fumbled his pants this morning while he was getting dressed. Darius Slayton took a flamethrower to the Texans' defense. He torched number 54 yards in a house call. Coach Dable was demonstrative on the sidelines. Someone pissed him off and they were gonna get a big bald earful. The Texans are so close to losing every game. What is their record anyway? Just a bunch of frowny face emojis? This game was ugly. Another dismal performance by Andy Dalton. But I know what you're thinking. What about the Pigeons? Oh, they were there. TJ Watt was finally back from injury. The season was saved. Najee Harris was bouncing off defenders and picking up big yards. Right, right. But what about those Pigeons? Just like the Steelers, they're not going anywhere. Dennis Allen refused to comment when asked if it was time to switch to Jameis Winston, but you just know he will. Drowning people flail in all directions for anything to grab onto, even if that something is Jameis Winston. Safety Minka Fitzpatrick missed the game due to an emergency appendectomy the day before, and the Steelers won. Coincidence? Why risk it? Harvest another organ next week and see if the trend continues. Quit your bitching, Minka. You want a gallbladder or you want to win? Saturday! 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 It's weird to see vanilla become the most polarizing thing in sports, but here we are. Everyone's favorite porcupine dipped in battery acid was there too, fresh from the accessories store. Matt Ryan was back under center, and why not? This franchise has the consistency of a McDonald's shake machine. Ryan's steady, liver-spotted hand and Jonathan Taylor's legs helped guide the Colts to a win. Derek Carr got emotional after the game. It's a heavy toll to disappoint Guy Fieri. Now nobody gets to try the lobster mac and cheese, which I assume came loaded with flavor crystals and prizes you'd find in a claw machine at a cursed gypsy's wedding. Jeff Saturday's win over Josh McDaniels made me thirsty for more. Every week, the NFL should drag somebody off the street and force them to play the Raiders. The more random, the better. Children, hospice patients, people who've never seen or even heard of football before and don't speak English. All part of the NFL Network's brand new show. Can you beat Josh McDaniels? Probably. It was Mike McCarthy's return to Green Bay, and he was sporting a look I'd never seen before. He looked like he should be passing envelopes to people on a park bench while talking without looking at them. Aaron Rodgers must be the goddamn key master because he unlocked Christian Watson for over 100 yards and three touchdowns. But I guess it helps to open up the pass game when you run Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon for 200 yards. The Cowboys went for it on fourth and four, and they fell short. McCarthy was pissed. But that's the life of a cowboy, nothing but pew pew you and rope and steers. Or maybe McCarthy felt the sting of being a get-right game for the Packers. <laughs> Kyler Murray and Matthew Stafford missed this game. They were at home eating pudding. This was a no-holds-barred, epic, knockdown drag-out fight between Colt McCoy and John Wolford. No, 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 don't leave yet, don't leave yet. There were actually touchdowns in this game. James Conner had a big old pair. AJ Green snagged one in the end zone. McCoy was good enough, and that's all they needed. The Rams are scraping gum off the floor of the NFC West, and they just lost Cooper Cup. Time to stick this season on a pyre and light it up. <laughs> Elijah Mitchell returned from injury and surprised everyone after he shared the backfield evenly with Christian McCaffrey. Better they share the ball than the IR. Justin Herbert had another rough showing behind his turnstile front line, throwing to receivers that wouldn't have names in a video game. The Niners' defense dumped bodies on Herbert. He had his head spun like a dreidel. Dre Greenlaw was punted from the game for it. The Chargers didn't have a run game. Three running backs combined for only 11 carries. Not even when backup Chase Daniel was forced into the game, viciously clenching his PP organ as he stared at Nick Bosa licking his lips across the line from him and calling him boy. What did you expect? I'd heave balls out of bounds too if my fingers were covered in flop sweat. Coach Staley said, there wasn't a lot of air in the second and third level to take advantage of. This ain't a trip up Everest, although if that's how you need to frame it to run the ball, then somebody find Austin Eckler a Sherpa. The Eagles' perfect season hit a minor snag as they lost a game. The Commanders grabbed hold of this game like a Dallas Goddard face mask. During a punt, the Eagles were flagged for an ineligible man downfield, which I didn't know was possible. Aren't they all supposed to go downfield? That's where the ball is. Who's not allowed to follow? Quez Watkins made a huge catch and then lost the ball. I guess he's the fumbling Batman. Taylor Heineke took a knee, but the Eagles hit him anyway, drawing a flag for roughing the passer. It cost them the ball and their final chance at a comeback. Somewhere in the midst of this, you just know there was a salty Carson Wentz cheering for both quarterbacks to lose. Twitter mocked up the Eagles-themed Nikes Heineke will no doubt purchase after the win. And I have just one question. 
Who the fuck is sitting on a table like that? Thank you so much for watching Shut Up Football. We do appreciate it. We'll catch you next time. Peace! Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. It sound right, boy. <laughs> demonstrative. <laughs> That's hard to yell. You can't yell demonstrative. Is that ironic? I guess it is. Pew, pew, pew.